Hi, my name is Mike, and in this video I'm going to be showing how to configure storage on a Dell PowerEdge server running VMware ESXi. Now all of this that I'm going to be showing you is, is configuration of the RAID controller and so forth while the server is running. And so we're not going to take the server offline. If you have a server that is currently in production running virtual machines, you can do all of these changes um, what, without any downtime. And so we're using a Dell R6515. Uh, this is an Epic Roam series, a 1U rack mount server, and I have an H740P RAID card in there, and I'm going to be using the iDRAC and I have the Enterprise license uh, for, for the iDRAC card in there. Um, and so I'm not sure how much this changes if you have the iDRAC Express. I'm assuming some of this you probably still can do. Um, but the Enterprise allows you to do uh, RAID configuration through through the iDRAC interface. And so I'm going to be showing you how to start with from scratch, inserting a new drive, having it be detected in VMware, and then we're going to throw a virtual machine on there and I'm going to add a second drive, switching to a RAID level 1, and then add a third drive, switch to a RAID level 5, and just show how that whole process goes uh, from starting without storage to adding new storage uh, to a server without any downtime. So let's get started. First, as you can see, I am currently on the uh, iDRAC configuration uh, web interface for the server. And you can see I'm under, I went under configuration and then to storage configuration and that got me here. I expanded the physical disk configuration and as you can see, there are no additional physical disks. That's because I haven't uh, inserted one of the drives. I have VMware open up here and as you can see in VMware uh, with devices it only has the single device that that ESXi is uh, is installed on um, and so I just have that set up and and nothing else is showing up under devices so anyway back to the the iDRAC interface if I want I can go ahead and insert one of the disks all right, so now as you can see, the new disk is showing up in uh, my physical disk configuration. Now, to use this disk in a RAID, you basically have to go into this uh, virtual disk configuration and, and create a new virtual disk. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, we can name it something. We're gonna stick with RAID 0 for right now just because it's a single disk and doesn't really matter. Uh, and you can define, okay, I want it set as an SSD, pretty much keeping the, the defaults as, as they are. Uh, capacity will autofill once you actually select a drive. And so to select a drive, you, you scroll down and check the disk that is found that it found, and then this gets filled in. Uh, for SSD, I don't uh, configure read ahead to cache or uh, write back cache. Um, and so this will basically, when it's writing to the disk, it will write directly to the SSD. Uh, this RAID card has a uh, fast path, uh, which, which optimizes the writes. Um, what this will do, the card does have 8 gigs of, of cache on it, though. And so what, what will happen is that I'll have an 8 gig read cache. It just won't read ahead. So uh, let's go ahead and add this to pending operations and it will show up so if you say pending operation let's see if we can view this and it says uh, that it's going to create a virtual disk as a pending operation and if i come back in here you'll see it listed there but basically what you want to do is actually apply the, the the change right now so i'm going to go ahead and do that and it's been added to the job queue. Well, let's go look at the job queue page. And here you will see that it is running, that the job is in progress. What I've noticed is that it stays on like 1% and then it moves to 100 very quickly. All right, now that the job's completed, let's go back to the storage configuration. So uh, we will look and it we should show up on a virtual disk. Uh, good, my RAID. 
uh, raid zero, and it's uh, with that uh, that one drive in it. And now let's go back over to ESX and make sure, and sure enough, it's showing up as a new disk uh, on on the uh, on the sur on on ESX. So that's great. Uh, let's go back and say say we want to add another disk to this and do a raid migration. So here's how we're going to do that. Uh, first, I'm going to insert my second disk here uh, in the actual hardware itself. All right, now that we have the new disk in, let's try to see if it's going to show up under physical disk. And sure enough, there it is. And it says it's unassigned. Um, and it's an SSD. So let's go back into the virtual disk configuration now. Um, we're going to do the, the raid that we just created. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a raid level migration. So what this does is that it shows you basically, OK, you have one disk uh, added. Uh, and so let's add another one. So we're adding the second disk. And then it asks us, do we want, want to change the RAID level? I do want to change the RAID level because now that there's two disks, let's go to our RAID 1. So we have the same new size. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and click Apply. And then it's going to come up with that, that pending operation. So let's see what we have two pending operations that we're going to do. Edit the disk capacity and do a RAID level migration. And so let's go ahead and apply now. Uh, and then we can look at the job queue. All right, it shows that the RAID was reconfigured. And so let's go look over in the storage configuration to see what happened there. So we come back over and let's see, we go and go virtual disk. OK, so as you can see, it only shows that it's RAID 0 and not RAID 1. So it still hasn't done the full RAID migration yet. Um, this might be a bug in IDRAC um, because the job said that it was already complete, um, but it obviously isn't. Looking at the server, I can see that the two disks are doing something. It looks like they are syncing, um, and it would take quite a while to go ahead and sync, depending on the size of the disk. So I'm going to wait for this to, to finish and see if this will end up snapping in afterwards. All right, I am back a very long time later. So the whole time the the disks have been working at uh, rebuilding uh, as a RAID 1. Uh, and so now if I come in here, though, now that it's done, uh, you can see that there is, uh, it does say that it is a, a mirror now. Uh, and it gives me a full set of actions to go ahead and do on this RAID. I also, while I was waiting, I said I copied a test VM uh, over. I create went through, and on the new data store, um, I created I or copied a test uh, VM over to it, and I've been running that. Uh, and I have not rebooted since starting this, so it's still going uh, just fine. Um, and now is going to be the part where uh, it's a little bit different. Uh, what I want to do is I want to add a third disk and make it into a RAID 5. And when I do this, the capacity of the volume is going to change. And so there's going to be changes in on VMware side as well. Um, and so let's go ahead and do that now and see what happens. I know I'm going to trigger a rebuild, which will probably take the rest of the night. I'll just leave it going. But I think that as soon as I start that, uh, the new capacity will be available in, in VMware. So let's give it a shot. Let's see if it will show up under the physical disk configuration yet. I think I'm going to need to refresh this. It's a little annoying. I wish they had like an automatic refresh in the IDRAC. Um, that'd just be kind of nice. Um, does take a few seconds for it to recognize a new a new physical disk, though. And there it is. 
All right, so that is ready to go. Let's come back down here to our raid and we want to do a, another raid level migration. And this time we're gonna go from a raid one to a raid five. So we're going to add a new physical disc, select the new SSD, and select our new raid level as a raid five. And notice that this doubles our capacity um, now because we're having two disks for data and one disk for parity. And let's go ahead and apply that. All right, and so now if we see this, we have two pending operations of raid level migration and editing the disk uh, capacity. Uh, so let's go ahead and apply those now. And that looks like it will be good and now it will show up in the job queue and this usually finishes uh, within about a minute um, in the meantime we are still uh, uh, logged in this is still running um, the virtual machine and let's see here I mean this, the virtual machine isn't doing anything right now but it is running off of that that disk so uh, let's go back Alright, looks like it's completed. So let's go back to the storage configuration and look at the virtual disk. And again, it still says it's RAID 1 and it, it looks like, yeah, I mean, it, it, iDirect just doesn't know about the new RAID level until the rebuild completes. And it doesn't give you any kind of notification of how much longer it's going to take. Um, but the thing is that if you let it go, it will complete and uh, while the system is live. All right, so at this point, I, I uh, was able to look through and see that the new space, uh, new amount of space is not yet available to the OS. And this is confirmed through here where it says it's still RAID 1 until the resync completes. And then if I also go into the storage overview and look at the virtual disks, that also shows the the original uh, capacity that's not available yet. And then come finally coming into VMware, and if I do a refresh or a rescan, uh, this is actually still showing 1.75 terabytes. So I can't yet uh, make it uh, make use of the increased capacity, and I'll just have to wait uh, until this resync finishes. So let's. Um, I guess I'll, I'll stop there and we'll pick this back up once the, the resync's done. All right, I let this go overnight and this morning I came in to find that the raid had finished rebuilding or seemed to have finished rebuilding on, uh, on the device itself. And so then I opened up iDRAC and sure enough, it now lists it as RAID 5. It, it lists the increased capacity. Uh, we can go also under the storage configuration and we can come down here and look at the virtual disk configuration. Again, it shows RAID 5 and a full set of actions uh, that we couldn't do before while I was doing the last migration. So again, I wish that, um, uh, that iDRAC would show when uh, a storage operation was, was being performed on, on the device because you really don't have any idea, especially if you're working remotely, uh, you don't have that feedback that something's actually happening uh, on, on the server side. Um, so I think we're set as far as the volume expansion is concerned. Now let's go into VMware and find out uh, what happened here. Now originally this was still showing the old capacity uh, on this device and, and I was trying to figure out why that was and what I was missing was that you have to go into the adapters uh, and this is uh, where it picks up the, the perk. And if you rescan the adapters, uh, then it will come back through and you hit switch to devices and it will show the, uh, the, the larger capacity. Anyway, so once you do that, you want to increase the capacity of the device. And we're going to do that by expanding an existing data store extent. We'll select the data store. And you can see here that uh, there's the 
the device that, that there's some free space and we want to use that to expand the extent. So let's go ahead and select that. All right, so now that we've done that, let's let's go ahead and we need to select the partition that we want to expand. And then we want to drag this slider so that it's using the full space. So afterwards, we want that partition to use the full device. And click Next, and it's ready to complete it. So let's go ahead and hit Finish. Um, not sure how long this will take. Actually, it looks like it's already done. Great. Um, OK, so now we're down here, and it looks like our data store is actually already the larger size. And uh, so yeah, we're all set. So uh, just to go over what we did is we expanded our RAID uh, from RAID a single disk RAID 0 to, well, or a single disk, uh, to a, a two disk RAID 1. And then after that, we took it and went from a two disk RAID 1 to a three disk RAID 5, which increased its capacity. Uh, and then we went into VMware to detect that new capacity and use it for for the the data store that we have on on this server um so yeah i i, I it, overall it, it worked really well i didn't have to reboot or or anything it, uh, the biggest inconvenience was just waiting for the raid migration the rebuild to take place um but overall uh the process was really smooth and and no downtime we can come back here and look and and our host is still running uh, on the data store and uh, and yeah so this would definitely work I mean you definitely would want to have backups uh, before doing this if you had it on kind of a live production server um, uh, if you have a really big installation then you would v motion all the stuff off or, or you'd probably have a, a, a a, an iSCSI mount or, or, or SAN or something like that uh, to do the storage. But but on a single server, uh, this works really well, and it's, uh, it's something that um, I would feel comfortable doing in production as long as I had backups beforehand. So, Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please click the like button down below, and subscribe if you're interested in technology or photography topics. I try to post a new video here every month. If you have more interest in the Dell R6515, uh, check out this video here and where I go and I do a full unboxing of the server and talk about the configuration I went for. See you next time.